Black Friday and Cyber Monday are fast approaching. Now, a lot of us go out there and we're getting excited to buy all sorts of crap that we may or may not even ever use again. But hey, a great deal is a great deal, right? Well, not always. Today, we're gonna to talk about five things rich people do that poor people don't on Black Friday. So you can go out there and actually make your life better this Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Let's dive in. So pretty much all of us get excited on Black Friday for lots of different reasons. Maybe we want to go out there and get a deal on that 70 inch TV screen that we've been eyeing up. Or maybe we're thinking about our relatives over the holidays and we want to find the perfect gift for our loved ones. There's lots of great reasons to get excited about Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Now there's also people that are getting excited about this holiday because they're about to have the biggest sales weekend of their entire year. They're about to blow up their business because everybody in the whole country is excited about buying this weekend. And there are plenty of people willing to sell. So what is the difference between rich people and poor people during this holiday? Because usually our lives are just results of our choices. What choices do we make under the same context? Two different people, the same holiday, what are they doing different? So I have a quote from Grant Cardone that I think is gonna give us some really good perspective and context for this conversation. Grant says, once you got the discipline in saving money and not spending everything you earn, you gotta go crazy in production, getting more money. So he's saying once you get the money, you gotta go crazy in getting more money. And then the third thing you gotta do is get to take the production money and make the third play, which is put it in assets that are gonna pay you forever. This is some classic rich dad, poor dad stuff right here. Buying cash flowing assets that will actually pay for the, that 70 inch TV you want over the Black Friday holiday instead of using money that you earned trading your time for money because that's a completely different thing. Something Grant Cardone knows very well. He has a G-Wagon, but he buys it from rent checks that come in from the apartment buildings he owns, not from a paycheck he gets for trading his time for money. So once you make the money, then you take that money, you put it into assets that make you more money and then you use money from the assets, not your time to spend. Go out there, spend it, buy everything you want on Black Friday. So five things that rich people do differently than poor people on Black Friday. Number one is production versus consumption. I've talked about this before, but the big difference, the big shift you have to make if you wanna be rich is shift your focus from consumption to production, okay? That means instead of identifying yourself by what bands you like, you start to play the music yourself. That means instead of identifying yourself by what books you read, you start to write your own books, okay? It's cool to do this in every area of your life. It's gonna make your life much more fulfilling to make the switch from consumption to production. But the place that we really wanna do it when it comes to money is buying versus selling, right? We want to be the one selling instead of the one buying. This Black Friday, we wanna be focused on what deals are we putting out into the marketplace? What insane deal are we gonna to give to our customers that's gonna make their life better instead of asking what deals are there out there for me? That's the shift you need to make if you wanna be the one making the money instead of the one spending it, right? Uh, number two, things that rich people do differently than poor people on Black Friday is they invest in assets versus liabilities, right? So this is the classic lesson from Rich Dad, Poor Dad. If you think about the home that you live in, is that an asset or liability? Most people would say that's an asset because it has the ability to appreciate. But the home you live in does not pay you any money. There are no rent checks coming in every month. So in the book, he talks about you should go out there and you should buy a rental unit and rent that out to somebody else before buying your own home because that's actually an asset. An asset is something that you put money into and it brings you more money. It is a money multiplier. Whereas a liability, you buy a house to live in, and what are you doing? If you have owned a home before, you know that houses are money pits. There's always something to fix. There's property taxes, there's deferred maintenance, there's appliances that break, my fridge is broken right now, it's a pain in the ass. So what we wanna do is we want to find money multipliers. These are things that we put our money into and we get more money back out. And we can do this on Black Friday and I'll get to that in a little bit. But we can find the things that we're gonna spend our money on because it's a great deal on Black Friday and we're actually gonna see more money come back from that. Number three, things that rich people do differently than poor people on Black Friday is consider the true cost. This one really gets to me. So 
I see this show up with leasing versus buying a car. Some people will argue that it is always better to buy a car and anyone that leases is an idiot. Now I lease my cars and it's for a very good reason. And the people that think that you should always buy no matter what because you're saving money have no concept of opportunity cost. So let's think about this for a second. Let's say that I buy a car instead of leasing. Now all of a sudden I have to deal with maintenance, with oil changes, um, with taking care of the car, and then also with pricing it out and selling it if I want to upgrade in three years. Now, at least if I want to upgrade in three years, I'm just going to take it back to the dealership, hand in the keys and get a new one, right? So let's say that over the course of three years, owning versus leasing, dealing with all the things that come along with owning a car and being responsible for it, as well as actually getting rid of that car and getting a good deal on it when I do get rid of it. Let's say that it costs me 10 days of my time, okay? Whereas I wouldn't have to worry about any of that if I was leasing. I wouldn't have to sell it at the end, I wouldn't have to price it out, I wouldn't have to let people test drive it, all that stuff. So let's say it cost me 10 days of my time. Now let's say if I had worked those 10 days instead, over the course of a couple of years, the work that I created during those 10 days would pay me about $3,000 a day. So that means it would cost me $30,000 in opportunity cost to buy my car instead of rent it. So maybe I would save $10,000 on the price by buying the car instead of leasing it, but it would cost me $30,000. So that's a net loss of $20,000. That is considering my time and effort when I buy something. And so when it comes to Black Friday, it's the same thing. Uh, it might not be a car deal, but just think about all the things that you buy and that people buy for you. Like I have an espresso machine I bought a couple years ago. I thought it would be great to have an espresso machine. I'm drinking it right now and it is pretty awesome. But here's the thing, that espresso machine has broken like five times. And every time that it breaks, I spend a couple hours trying to fix it myself. I usually am unsuccessful. Then I search the internet to try and figure out how to fix it. And then eventually I'm gonna have to take that to a repair shop. So I'm gonna have to drive there. I'm gonna have to pay somebody else to fix it. Then I'm gonna drive there, pick it up, and then bring it back. And so when you buy things, you have to consider your time and effort. Everything has a cost. Even if it's just figuring out where to store your junk or cleaning up your house because you have too many belongings, there is a time and effort requirement for everything that you buy. And so uh, a couple of years ago when I went through a minimalist phase, I stopped letting people buy me Christmas presents unless it was a good reason, unless it was a gift they really thought I would like. But um, some people used to buy me gifts just for gift's sake. And all of a sudden I'm spending my time lugging the stuff around that doesn't really mean anything to me. And if that sounds harsh, uh, just consider that there's a real cost to owning stuff. And so you wanna make sure the things you own, that actually you love it and they bring you joy and make your life better. They enrich your life instead of taking away from it. I mean, the extreme of this would be hoarding, right? What is the cost of hoarding? What is the cost of keeping those things? It's, it's large. Number four, we have tax planning. So Black Friday, there are often bundle deals and uh, like yearly annual deals on monthly payments, things like that. And Black Friday is a great time to pre-purchase things for next year because we're about to hit the end of the fiscal year and that means the number on our income statement we're going to be taxed on at the end of this year. So a great way to lower our tax obligation to the U.S. government is to simply pre-purchase some things that we're going to have to use next year no matter what. So if I know I need software next year no matter what and there's a 50% off Black Friday deal, if I buy that ahead of time, this is a great thing to buy on Black Friday. I'm getting a better deal, I'm saving money, I'm pre-purchasing, so it's gonna be a larger cash outlay right now, but I'm gonna pay less in taxes this year. And number five, the fifth thing that rich people focus on that poor people don't during Black Friday is momentum. Black Friday and Thanksgiving is when a lot of people check out for the year. It's the end of November, there's one month left in this year, a lot of people are just gonna phone it in. They're not gonna put in another day of hard work this year, and they're gonna say, well, you know what, I'll wait till next year, and then, things are gonna be great. Now the people that are going to crush it are the people that are doubling down right now. They're getting everything ready because end of December, January, February, March, these are some of the best times to sell in a lot of businesses. I know my business, our busiest time of the year is gonna be January, February, March. And so what am I doing? As far back as October 1st, I'm planning out those months. I'm planning out how are we ready? Because if you start thinking about your business on January 1st, you're already two months behind the curve. You're gonna get crushed, right? You need to be on the ground running when the new year rolls around. So this Black Friday, think about the things that you can purchase that are gonna give you momentum going into the new year, not things that are gonna slow you down. Now, I just wanna say, 
that, you know, if you have fun going out there and buying things on Black Friday, there's nothing wrong with that. And if that recharges you and this is a fun time of year for you, I don't want to dissuade you from going out there and buying things. I just want you to consider what the consequences are because there are consequences. And so if going out there and buying things, it recharges you, it gives you energy, it gets you fired up, and maybe it gets you to work harder or you get a lot of enjoyment out of things that you do buy, go do it because one of the best things you can do for yourself is do the things that make you happy and that's gonna make the rest of your life better overall. It's gonna make your relationships better and your work better. It's gonna recharge you. You know, so all of us need to recharge. So if you wanna go out there and buy an Xbox and play video games, if that thing actually recharges you, go out there and do it. But if that thing takes away your momentum and it distracts you and you kind of go down the spiral where all of a sudden all you've done is play video games for a month and all, now you have, you're, you have self-loathing energy going around, then maybe consider the time and effort required from that purchase, right? It's not just the cost we pay. It's not just the couple hundred bucks we spend on that item, but it is what we do with that item afterwards. So these are just some things that can make your life better to consider. Five things that rich people do that poor people don't. Remember, our lives are just the result of our choices. So the choices you make this holiday season will determine your year in 2020. So in summary, focus on production instead of consumption. Buy assets instead of liabilities and then buy stuff with the cash flow from those assets rather than spending your hard earned money on liabilities when that money is never going to come back. Find those money multipliers. Number three, consider the true cost of what you buy, right? In what you do, that night out getting drunk, the cost is not just the money you spend on alcohol, but is the cost of feeling like crap the next day. It's the cost of losing momentum. It's the cost of all the stupid things you do, right? Your foggy mind. So consider the true cost. But again, I'm not trying to play a one-sided game here. That night out, it might be great social connections. It might enrich your life more than the cost. Just think about these things. And then consider your taxes. This is a great time to pre-purchase things for next year to save on your taxes this year because you're going to get a deal on it and it will lower your tax burden. And number five is momentum. We want to start running. We want to start building up speed. So January 1st comes, we're running faster than everyone else in our market and we destroy our competitors, okay? We hit the new year completely ready to go. We're not scrambling around on January 2nd, still a little bit hungover from the New Year's celebration, trying to figure out, okay, how do I put this thing together? Because by the time we implement those projects that will carry us into the new year, it's gonna be months down the line, right? So we wanna get those done now. So if you're looking for a great way to do these things, to do more production instead of consumption, to buy assets instead of liabilities, to buy things that have a net positive to your life, to save money on your taxes and to get momentum into the new year. At digitalnomad.com, we are holding a Black Friday sale. We're offering a super bundle. We don't offer this any other time of the year and you can take my word for it that you're not gonna see this again. Maybe next Black Friday you'll see it, but not until then. So we've got a super bundle. We've got three courses for the price of one. We got the Work From Anywhere Accelerator. That's gonna show you how to start a Work From Anywhere ad agency and get your first paying client. If you're brand new to business, this is the best way to learn skills. Go out there and learn how to become a producer instead of a consumer. Uh, number two, we got Blockbuster courses. So we talk about those money multipliers. If you already have expertise and you want to develop an online course, even if you have no idea really what topic you would choose right now or where to start, Blockbuster courses are gonna teach you how to create money multipliers in your business so that the money you make isn't dependent on the time that you put into the business, but actually just on the value you create for the marketplace. So Blockbuster Courses will show you how to go from scratch, from zero to seven figures with an online course, with real world examples, so things that we actually have done. It's taken years of studying to pull this off and then we've implemented this over and over again. It's a proven system. It's gonna get you to go out there, make your very first sale, get results for your students. It's gonna teach you how to teach and uh, teach you how to scale seven figures. Number three, we have the $10 million YouTube ads. This is the game plan we use to go from spending $0 on YouTube to spending $100,000 a month on YouTube ads profitably, uh, bringing in over $200,000 a month. And we did it in like 30 days. Like we went from zero and spend on YouTube to $100,000 and spend on YouTube uh, in 30 days. And we've actually scaled that up to about $5,000 a day. So if you wanna learn how to run YouTube ads for your own business, for your clients' businesses, um, we're going to be, this course is already released, it's done, but we're actually gonna be up, updating with walkthroughs and we're gonna show you exactly everything that's happening inside our account, how we profitably spend $5,000 a day on ads uh, with really simple video ads, you know, really simple, 
no pro no high production stuff. All basically stuff that any of you could do out there right now. So if you want to save money on these courses by getting all three for the price of one, again, you won't see this again. Uh, just go to digitalnomad.com slash bundle. That's digitalnomad.com slash bundle. That's going to be our Black Friday special and Cyber Monday. Uh, so you see that through the weekend, and then we'll shut it down. And after that, you're going to have to pay for each of those courses individually. Otherwise, have fun on Black Friday. You know, if you like to go out there and shop, do it. Treat yourself. Uh, but just consider, you know, what the cost is. As long as you're okay with that, that's cool. But five things that rich people do differently than poor people do on Black Friday. Number one, focus on production instead of consumption. Be the one selling instead of the one buying. Two, buy assets instead of liabilities. Those are money multipliers. Three, consider the true cost of what you buy. The time and effort required to deal with that thing after you buy it. Even like tech setup. I bought a bunch of tech this week for the studio. And just sitting here like trying to figure out uh, things not syncing correctly. You know, the app not syncing up correctly with this stats gauge back here. The time that I spend on that is so frustrating to me. And so it's not just the cost of the things that you buy, but the time you put into them. Uh, four, consider your taxes. It's a great time to prepay for stuff if you get a really good deal on something that you're gonna use next year and you can write it off in your business. And then number five, momentum. Let's get everything in place so that January is our best month of the year. Again, digitalnomad.com slash bundle. Let me know if you like this video. If you wanna see more list stuff like this, smash that like button. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and please comment below. Let me know what's your favorite thing that you're going to buy this Black Friday. And uh, do you think it's a net positive, net negative for your life? Is it for enjoyment or for production? Either one is cool. Remember, we all need to recharge. We all need to be happy in our lives. And that's going to create a net positive effect across everything. I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving. I'll be thinking about you. And check out digitalnomad.com slash bundle. I'll see you on the next video.